Hello and welcome back to Boring Dad Gaming, where today we're going to be taking a further look at the beta for Rogue New Traders. Oh, what's that? Oh, okay, yeah, we can kind of position ourselves a little bit. I was actually trying to do this. So we're going, we've, we've fought off sort of the rebellion, really. The guy who was the Master of Whispers, who was behind it, actually escaped. Um, but we've been asked to go and check on the Warrant of Trade, which I guess is this big thing here. Let's go and do so. Alright. Let it be known that by my will and by the true words of this document, I appoint this person to be the bearer of the warrant of trade, blah, 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 to be the paragon of humanity, unbroken by adversity. Well, oh, okay, it's going faster than I can read it out loud. Hopefully you get that. Again, it might be voiced in the full game. There will be voice lines in the full game. Um, not yet, though. Vox Skull. The servo skull's creaking gradually turns into comprehensible words. Escort the child of the house to safety. What madness is happening here? Who are you? Who addresses me? Temporary on obnubilation following acute stress. Mobile unit of the Warrant Sentinel standing by. Are you the Warrant, warrant Sentinel? Mobile unit of the Warrant Sentinel dis designed as a personal escort of the child of the house and a means of communicating with the rogue trader's subjects. Mobile unit standing by. I need a weapon. Distance from the current location to the nearest arsenal. Initiating situational calculations. The servo skull goes silent, its relays clicking. Second after second passes and you realize that the servo skull will not answer you. I need to contact someone, like Theodora. Voxcast frequencies disrupted. Initiating setup. Establishing connection. In place of the mechanical screeching, the servo skull's vox projects the voice of Theodora van von Valencius. Distorted and ridden with static, yet still recognizable beyond a doubt. Vox master, restore communication with the navigator's sanctum. I am trying to contact the bridge. If anyone can hear me on this frequency, regroup all available forces and head for, to the upper decks at once. I repeat, regroup all available forces and head. Communication protocols breached. Signal latency assessment unavailable. Unable to establish two-way connection. Lead me away from here. Middle and upper decks. Assuming the probability of safe placement in areas of concentration of armed units. Calculating. The servo skull twitches and makes a few clicks. To prevent unauthorized unit from breaching the warrant chamber. Preemptive sealing must be initiated. The mobile unit will start execu executing the received order immediately after the safety of the warrant is secured. End dialogue. Okay, so we've got to, we've got to follow this thing, presumably. Let's have a look at the uh, log system then. So that's inventory or inventory character. Have a look at the character screen. It's probably similar to the, uh, the sort of summary screen that we got at the end of character creation. There we go. We see six movement points, four action points. Uh, we've got an old wound, permanent, uh, which wasn't healed in time. It can be healed by a medkit. Uh, well, we haven't been hit yet. That that might have happened in the cutscene when we got captured. Uh, features. So when we have a melee weapon, presumably with this charge thing will become available to us. Uh, we've got some passive stuff. I think we already saw that character creation. The doctrines. Uh, fighter doctrine is in progress. I don't really know. Oh, these are okay. These are like the sort of skill trees and stuff. Uh, I haven't... I don't know. I'm sure we'll get to that in level up. I'm not going to explore it all now. Uh, biography. Okay. Maybe as we achieve stuff, it'll get listed here. Uh, we've got. Uh, this is our journal, though. So by right of blood. Uh, rogue trader. Blah, blah, blah. So we've got to seal the warrant chamber. A simple order to the sentinel cogitator will lock the chamber. Okay. So let's go do that. It's quick now. Right. So let's do this then. This is Abelard. Seneschal Abelard Wasserian, or Wasserian, has lost some of his former polish. His forehead is sweating and one of the sleeves of his coat is torn and soaked through with blood. Never, nonetheless, despite his heavy breathing, he stands firm and his gaze is demanding, albeit somewhat surprised. Ah, Master Boring Dude, what, whatever are you doing in the Warren Chamber? How did you... He surveys the carnage around him. His brow furrows and he places a hand on his weapon. 
Throw and preserve me. What is the meaning of this? Conrad, uh, Conrad Voitvir is a traitor. When we parted ways on the officer's deck, he stunned me somehow and brought me here. The Seneschal's eyes widen. What? Uh, he spoke about defiling the warrant with some ritual and serving the gods of the warp. Serving the gods of the warp? Gunred is a heretic? Oh, Voidvir, you void rat. Abelard shakes his head. Madness! And this mutiny is likewise his doing, no doubt. Uh, he openly admitted it was him. Grox seed. What's a grox? A large, half-domesticated reptile widespread in the Imperium. Grox are most commonly bred as livestock or beasts of burden. Then it is small wonder that the heretics are so well organized. Now I thought his order to seal all passages between decks was his attempt to stop the attackers from spreading to other levels. But now I see the real reason. It was to stop the enforcers from intervening. Oh, at least you're alive and now safe, Master Boring Dude. Alas, I doubt we can afford to look for a compartment to sit out this disaster. Abelard examines you critically. You're in a bad way, Boring Dude. I can treat your wounds. I have a Medicaid kit with me. And for the love of the throne, now is not a good time to be walking around decks without mean of self-defense. He hands you a weapon. Here. I've got an axe. Yay. Just plate and a medikit. Sweet. Okay, so let's go into our in inventory then. Uh, if I... What can I... Can I right-click this? Yes, use. That might happen if I close this. No? Uh, okay. It's pretty nice damage on the axe. We are going to equip that. I think we have an alternative uh, weapon set there, so we'll do that. And we'll take the chest plate, yeah. I'm not quite sure what's why we can't heal ourselves. Um... Is he in our party now? Okay. I think maybe Abelard's temporarily in our party, so can he... I'm not interested. Oh, can he at least do that? Okay, so if I click to what Abelard then... He can... heal us. Let me help. Back into the fray. Abelard nods in satisfaction. Ah, that is a noticeable improvement, boring dude. Now you are prepared for the trials ahead. The lower decks are teeming with heretics instigating the rabble to revolt. That is the least of our problems. The ship's enforcers are rounding up the scoundrels and suppressing the resistance. The situation on the middle decks is much worse, although strike teams have already been dispatched there. All communication with the bridge and the engineering bay was lost, so apart from scattered vox casts, we have no information to go on. But that is not the worst of all. He pauses when the light flickers yet again. All these jolts and shaking are most alarming. There are signs that the navigator and the master helmsman are having difficulty translating the ship out of the warp and into real space. In the worst case, they've already lost control of the process and we have all have precious few moments left to live. In the best case, if we manage to reach the navigator's sanctum and get a handle on the situation, some aboard this vessel may yet survive. How did you find me? Abelard tilts his head and looks at you with worry. Uh, you sent me a Vox message, specifically a Vox cast on the officer's frequency, which I had the good fortune to receive. Uh, do you mean to say you did no such thing? Did I? Uh, I think the Warrant Sentinel may have sent that message. It appeared when I opened the chamber. Warrant Sentinel? He looks at the servo skull floating next to you. The Lord Captain barely ever ventures down to the chamber, and I was at her side only once or twice when she did, and I did not see anything of the sort. The Warren Chamber is an ancient and rather sacred mechanism that the ship's tech priests treat with utmost reverence. I assume that whatever it is that you did, you must have activated certain processes and caused the Sentinel to awaken. But then why did none of it happen when Lady Theodora did the same? He frowns. I heard one of the Vox casts. Lady Theodora? Uh, which one? The last one I received was about the Navigator's Sanctum and that was oh, a good while ago. In any case, let us hope that the Lord Captain is well and safely in charge of the ship's defence. In the meantime, we must do all we can to prevent the ship from veering off course. Uh, what can we expect to find in the Sanctum? During warp transit, the Sanctum is closed to all who are not involved in the course charting process. And for good reason. 
For the navigator to open their third eye and perceive the way, the sanctum has to be bathed in the energies of the immaterium. Only a navigator can withstand such an ordeal. For the rest of us, any contact with the warp is fraught with perils such as loss of sanity, spontaneous mutations, and death. Abelard does not bat an eye as he lists all the horrors that you're about to face. I'm under no obligation to die of warp mutations. Abelard sighs before raising his voice slightly. I concur that under ordinary circumstances, interrupting the navigator's solitude would be the equivalent of suicide. Right now, however, our sacrifice could prevent the demise of a rogue trader, a void ship of the Imperium, and all her crew, armaments, and equipment. The choice is obvious. Alright. Very well. Lead the way. Absolutely boring, dude. Let us proceed. Vox skull. A wave of static suddenly erupts from the servo skull, and you can make out Theodora's words through the noise. <coughs> to arms, loyal sons and daughters of the God Emperor! Fight the heresy and corruption that threatens to consume our home, and with all your might, destroy those who have dared! <coughs> the Seneschal's eyes light up, and he smiles with grim determination. Oh, the Lord Captain is calling her crew to battle, which means the Vox networks are set up for broadcast transmission, not message exchange. Splendid. While the rogue trader inspires proper resolve to fight in her subjects, you and I shall prove that her trust in us is well deserved. Onwards. Ah. Don't you dare to cross us. Show them no mercy. Is that three their level or their hit points? Because it's quite quite low. All right, start the battle. No, they've got ten hit points. I think three might be the level. Or maybe not. One of them's got ten. Alright, who's first? Abelard. So Abelard is wielding a uh, chain sword, which is pretty cool. His skills, brace for impact. For one round, the Navy officer and allies in a three cell radius gain plus two deflection for each doctrine. Okay. He's also got charge. Let's activate that. Uh, hopefully, that's affected us too. Uh, we could charge. And let's do so. Do so he's got... He could attack again, but he's, he's out of um, range now. So we'll end him there. He's got parry. Another parry. <laughs> Despite melee superiority. Um, okay. Let's not worry about that, but we, we could charge ourselves. If we did that there, we might be able to get attack another one. Very nice. This here, we've got a swing or a strike. They both cost... Oh, this one costs 2 AP. Same damage, same penetration. That hits one creature. All creatures are in the area of effect. Oh, that's quite cool. I'll use my movement now, though. It's like a kind of like a big cleave kind of thing. Uh, nice. All right. Well, we'll just uh, we'll attack this dude anyway. Um, I, I guess we can do that, can we? Why not? Yeah, we're taking damage. We don't have the sort of same defenses that Abelard clearly does. Oh, we got a parry though. Dodged and parried. Alright, so Avalar, does, what does he have? The strike and slash. So has he got the same thing we do? I think he does. Uh, so let's use that. Not bad, Avalar. I'm going to end your turn there, because I want, I want Boring Dude to have a, a go of that. So let's uh, try this too. Mincemeat. Absolute mincemeat of them. Ah, we can, uh, we can loot stuff now like an area loot. We've got a Laz pistol, which uh, is not quite as good as what we've already got. Uh, bigger bigger ammo. Thing, I haven't, there's not like a monetary value to this stuff. It's also a sword, which is not quite as good as what we've got. I mean, let's just take it all, shall we? Oh, is that suggesting we're picking it all up? Yeah, okay, cool. 
Um, oh, we've leveled. Let's have a look at how this works then. So, how does this work? There's no, doesn't seem to be any sort of leveling tutorial uh, in this beta at the moment. So, can we increase any of this stuff? I've got. Why am I minus five on weapon skill? So, I can choose. Oh. She's skill. Okay, so we can choose an ability or or a or a skill. I assume. So, in terms of ability, what could we do? Until the fighter's next turn, all incoming damage is reduced. That could be quite good. A sworn enemy. The fighter marks a target and gets a bonus to armor and damage on that target. Reckless strike. The fighter's next melee attack gains plus five uh, percent. Plus strength bonus to armor penetration and damage and ignores parry. That's pretty good. Every enemy who survives the attack, enhanced by this ability, attacks the fighter back, including creatures with ranged weapons. Okay, so it's, it's a kind of a dual, dual edged sword, that one. Um, gathers all their strength to blow a crushing strike. Taunting, taunting scream, we can probably guess what that does. Break through the lines. Well, these ones are obviously recommended. We also have the skills. Uh, but I think we, we've got to take an ability, haven't we? I'm, I'm inclined to take Endure. So let's take that. Oh, do we get this as well? That's cool. Um, physical prowess and corrals. Uh, we could do any of the skills, really. But let's do athletics. Is that everything? I can't sort of include this stuff. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I think that I think that's it. So let's take a look at Abelard, who also leveled up. Uh, can I level him? Okay. Well, let's. Um Give him sworn enemy, and he he can have he can add athletics as well. Okay, fairly simple, fairly simple. So this doctrine stuff is interesting because it talks about having multiples of them. Uh, hopefully, at some point that'll be introduced. Um, we can see that you know as you level, it's going to give you cool stuff. So that's good. Right, I guess we head out this way. So that we'll head, select the Navigator Sanctum. It says I lost items. I don't, I don't know. I don't know why I'd have lost items. I'm not quite sure on that. Anyway. Oh, Adira is here. I think she was mentioned before. Kind of um, the old captain's advisor or something like that, I think. Oh, she's the psycho. Adira, the woman before you whips around and gazes straight at you, her eyes glowing with otherworldly light. And so he will enter the halls of the blinded guide and witness the radiance of the final dawn through the cracks and fall victim to a whim of fate. Ah, oh, Master Boring Dude, watch your head! Idira! Abelard grumbles as he dusts himself off and grips his weapon again. Would it be too much to ask that you phrase your soothsayings plainly for once? That was too close. The woman bursts into guttural, drunken laughter. Ha ha ha! Sorry, old man, the voices are so loud I can't even hear myself. They shriek, they sing. Oh, they, oh, Abelard, how they sing. Boring dude, this is Idira Tlas, personal psyche and diviner of her ladyship, Theodora von Valencius. Abelard looks her up and down, up and down. Idira. I'm not drunk, old man. I'm suffering the effects of the warp that is seeping through these walls. I see the ship's fate, 
to die in the waves of the Immaterium, fall under the burning rays of the final dawn, and in the roaring blaze I see a figure standing. Who is it? Who? I have no answer. The entity in your consciousness shrinks and crawls in deeper, its claws scraping against the walls of your mind, as if the presence is trying to hide from the seer standing before you. What are you doing here? The whispers call me. The ones I could make out among all the screams and screeches. Those who are rocking this boat hit us where it hurt. They went after the navigator, our guide through the warp. Other whispers called me to the Engineerium, but it was too late. I heard the cry of our master Cog, and the silence that followed. What? You don't mean the chief engine seer is... Yes, Abelard, dead, without a doubt. And all the voices wail, heralding countless nightmares, cackling at each soul among the hundreds that are now joining the warp. The shriek from the navigator's sanctum was louder than the rest, and it's better that we save the navigator than some lever puller from a cooling module or a cook from the middle decks. Vox skull. You hear a few clicks from the relay on the servo skull, which has followed you all the way here, and Theodora's scrambled words give way to a voice vaguely familiar to you. <coughs> Officer's frequency. To all who can hear me, those with the wep- It might be, uh, more tashy. Officer's frequency. To all who can hear me, those with the weapons in their hands are to gather on the officer's deck at once. I repeat, gather on the officer's deck at once and prepare to launch a counterattack. Oh, it's Ethelthrad. He had a very similar voice, to be honest. Oh, that's Ethelthrad. Emperor's Providence, the other heir lives as well. Quickly, we must head to... Not so fast, old man. If we drown in the warp, no number of Lady Theodora's heirs will be of use to us anymore. If Edelthred, like me, has not yet surrendered either mind or body to the mercy of the warp, then he can still hold out a little without us. Abelard spits out a florid curse. Oh, blast it, you're right. First, we need to deal with what is happening here. We must see if the navigator is well. Oh, no. No, 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 nothing is well about him. Can't you feel the chill crawling on your skin? The eyes watching you. The warp ice has already encased the bulkheads. What follows is calamity. Adira freezes, then slaps her cheeks, rubs her face and looks at you. The supernatural glow has gone from her eyes and a smirk spreads across her lips. But we're not just going to stand here and take it, are we? The state of things in here suggests there's a navigator around. Maybe one who's crippled or at death's door, but still kicking. And since our skin hasn't peeled off our faces just yet, his third eye must be closed. At worst, it's a little roughed up. So what are we moping around for? Let's go protect that noble mutant while we're still alive. Protect the navigator. Have we, so have we got, um, we've got Indira now in our party. Uh, we're going to have a quick look at her uh, stuff. She has a uh, chainsaw, a psychic staff. She can melee strike with it or do a lightning arc. Those are kind of her basic attacks. She's also got peering to the future of an ally to increase dodge and parry. Study enemies. Okay, so there's a lot going on there. Not quite sure. Maybe we'll try it in practice. Psychic Shriek deals uh, damage. The Psycho attacks the creature by focusing all of the will behind one massive site. Damage plus blah, blah, blah. Okay, yeah. And expose weakness. One stack of clue from the target to decrease its dodge, parry, and armor. Okay, cool. So she's kind of a support class, but able to do damage as well. All right. Uh, let's click on our dude. I assume we're all in the same party. I guess we go in here. Sounding a piece of pipe. Okay, looks like we're going to go into a fight. Your doom has been okay, so we can place the characters in position. I probably missed that before. Um, but obviously, uh, boring dude is a melee class, so we could get him right in there. Similarly, Avalard is too, so we could sort of stick him there. Uh, but Adira, we can maybe pop into cover. I guess we'll start the battle now. Okay. 
Hello you guys taking a bit of damage, now we've got our Psyker. So boost to... Looks like they're in range. So why can't we attack them? We can attack him! Or him. Or maybe it's not, oh, maybe it's the opposite. Maybe it's not within this range. In fact, I can see another red line there. So, okay, so it's so within this sort of halo of stuff. Um, all right, might hit that Psyker as well. Hit them both. Nice, that was a good move. Uh, she's got two thingies left. Uh, so why doesn't she put some forewarning on boring here? So she's got me more dodge and parry now. I'll do. Got a miss. Scroll down here so we get the uh, log. Abelard. Well, I mean, you. I guess you just come here and hit this dude, right? What's that? Sworn enemy. Okay. Follow my lead. Yeah, a little bit caught there, but that's okay. Take this dude down. A good charge. You can go for this one in cover. No? Alright, I thought he'd charge up to the enemy, but obviously not. It's a boring dude. Uh, I think it's probably fine. I think we'll just... Hit him. It's interesting that our movement goes after attacking. So obviously you've got to move, then attack. That's an interesting thing. But we do have charge, so I was going to maybe... Oh, he's going all the way there. All right, fine. Let's uh, let's do endure. Got endure again. I mean, maybe she just comes up here and wallops this guy. We'll do. Uh, Ves Vespiidus or Vespiidus. The creature in the chair appears as if it has become one with its throne. Get a better view of it. Uh, you see pink parchment like skin stretched between the seat and the limbs that have too many joints for a normal human being. The navigator is breathing heavily, the air whistling as it exits through the two dark gill like slits on its cheeks. The creature's eyes are shut, the two ordinary eyes as well as a third one that sits in the centre of its forehead. What is this thing that keeps coming up here? I don't know. Oh, is it? Is it something our skull's saying? Yeah, yeah I'm not quite sure why. Abelard. I believe Master Vespiadus still lives. Abelard flinches at the sight of the stretched skin and the dark marks on the face of the creature. The servants are dead, but the chamber, thank the Emperor, is still sealed from the warp. Well, we have a chance of leaving this place alive. Uh, let's ask Adira. What's wrong with him? Adira winces. Wounded, exhausted, fighting back the endless horrors of the warp that are forcing their way into his head. Pick one. Vespiadus, or Vespiadus. The navigator stirs, barely able to lift his head and half open his normal eyes. A dark drop rolls from under the closed lid of the third eye and down his face, leaving behind a black trail. Your time is short. The voice is coming from the Vox grill at the base of the bizarre chair. It is unclear how the navigator is able to produce human speech. Our time is short to do what? Suddenly, the navigator's body starts thrashing in place. It lurches forward and then falls back into the seat, and then thrusts forward again as its bones crack and its skin tears open. However, the fusion between the body and the chair appears to be stronger than these wild impetuses. The mutant remains seated, but leans as far forward as he can, his layered raiment slowly turning crimson. The gill slits burst open, forming two hideous, screaming, mouth-like pits. Fall to your knees, mortals, and behold the final dawn! Adira shrieks in terror. It came from beyond. His body is not his. Adira's scream is echoed by the silent cries in your head, 
The unseen creature triumphs at the sight of the navigator succumbing to the paroxysms of corruption. Its march thunders under the burden of hopes. Unseal your hearts and I will flood your souls with myriads of words and meanings, each one a portent of salvation within me. The navigator continues to convulse violently in his seat, shrieking and cackling, but then his fit stops abruptly. His face is drenched in black and crimson. The dark ooze from under his third eyelid has turned from a trickle into a stream mixed with the blood coming out of his nose, and there is purplish swelling around the eye. Run! Flee from this place while I have the strength! The words came up, come out of the box as a laboured rattle. I can contain the intrusion, but not for long. We must begin the translation. Leave the warp, but it can't be done without the Master Helmsman's help. Uh, address Abelard. The navigator's still alive, but barely so. So what do we do now? The Seneschal gazes at the figure in the chair. Oh, the ship can only begin the translation with the assistance of the Master Helmsman, if he is still alive. It is worth a try. We must get to the bridge, but we will need support. Our only option is to fight our way to the officer's deck and join forces with Edelthrad and his people. I believe we will also find Lady Theodora there. She must have heard the call to arms that the servo skull relayed to us earlier. Adira reaches her hand out towards the navigator, but pulls it back at the last moment. Vespiatus, good luck, and thank you. The navigator does not give her a, a response. Black tears mixed with blood are streaming from under the closed eyelids, and the vox at the base of the chair is bellowing out static interspersed with distant echoes of otherworldly laughter. So what's going on with this vox skull? Why is it, why is it continually saying this thing? I don't really know. I mean, there are, I think there are probably bugs. It is a beta. I read that there are certain bugs that people have noticed. Um, we can get a scrappy auto gun. Scrappy auto pistol. I'm going to guess that these are not prime weapons. It's the same axe as we're using. Uh, I guess we'll take it all. Might get a chance to sell some stuff. Uh, okay, where, where are we going? Maybe back this way? Go to the officer's deck. Just reading the text there about Xeno is the mortal enemy of every Imperial subject. Any human who displays inappropriate sympathy for or even heretical interest in these foul aliens will very quickly come to regret it. Hmm. Didn't our captain have a Xeno as, uh, as a pet? Which is interesting. Does that count as inappropriate sympathy? Argenta. The white-haired warrior turns to face you, her dark eyes blazing. The weapon quivers in her hands and, for a brief moment, it seems she's not going to stop and will instead continue eliminating every target she sees, starting with you. Ah, Sister Argenta! 
The Seneschal's voice carries the weight of a command. Oh, okay, it did it. And it seems to bring the warrior out of her battle trance. Sister Argenta, it is a relief to see you in good health and well armed. We require all the forces we can muster. The young woman called Argenta lowers her weapon and scans your small party with an intense gaze. Then she sets her sights on you. Your face, it is unfamiliar. Who are you? Oh, um... Boring dude von Valencius, the Lord Captain's heir. Argenta gives you another stern appraisal. You catch something strange in the dark depths of her eyes. Some internal struggle or a wordless question. In the end, however, she nods. The hour is dark and daunting. The ship abounds with corruption. The faces of friends are twisted by sneers of heresy. The eyes of comrades are igniting within the arch, igniting with the arch enemy's hunger. I will stand shoulder to shoulder with anyone willing to halt the advance of the dark forces. That is why you've come, isn't it? Oh, sister, I beg of you. Abelard appears to be losing his patience. Now is not the time for interrogations. Uh, the ship is under attack by heretics. We've been betrayed by our esteemed master of whispers. Edelthrad the heir is waiting for our aid, and Lord Captain Theodora is expecting a report on our success. <laughs> of course we're here to, here to deal with the situation, so I suggest we all do just that. Do not even think to insinuate that I am one of the traitors. I will not let such an affront slide. That answer does you credit. One of the truly righteous cannot bear even a fleeting thought of heresy. Argenta nods. I cannot wait to rain fire upon more heretics, each and every one of them. Uh, what is happening on the officer's deck? Ooh, massacre, my lord, and heretics are not just killing the crew. Some kind of blight is sweeping through the decks, filling the air. Oh, we saw people going mad the moment they breathed it in, screaming and about seeing their dead comrades. There's still a Cornwall in the far future. Tearing out their eyes. I implore you, my lord, be on your guard. We must get to the main hall. Through this door. Argenta nods at the passage to your right. I'll go with you. I can't wait to destroy those who encroached on the God Emperor's domain. We'll follow you. Uh, for now, we'll hold off any heretics who might try to crawl in through the cracks and join the main assault. And we'll take a look at the generators while we're at it. Those villains made a mess of the cables. Oh, I wish we had a technomat with us. Uh, but we'll have to see what we can do without one. Good to hear it, uh, sister. Ready. May Terra's light illuminate our path through fire and darkness. You're saying something different now. Maybe it just constantly sort of spouts this dogma. Uh, oh, there's goods here. Something to loot. Let's have a look. A well-maintained axe. So this is actually slightly more damage than we currently have. So we will take that. And let's pop to our uh, inventory. And equip it. Oh, wow, we're dual wielding them now. That's pretty cool. Tell you what, let's make the, the better one our main hand one. There we go. So he's got the pistol out and. Ching, ching. I wonder, actually, could we. Um... I wonder if we can dual wield our pistols as well. We can dual wheel the las gun. Yeah, it looks like it. Cool. What does this say? Uh, the explosion blasted a hole through the door, large enough for a person to get through. That's where our agenda came from, isn't it? Uh, we probably need to use that. Yeah, we're locked in otherwise. That's fine. Uh, so we'll take our whole crew. Victory awaits. How do I? Is F1? Oh, no, it's in Deer. Is she F3? No. I wonder how we... Apart from the obvious clicking on them, I wonder how we select individual uh, units. Indira used the tech check, and she succeeded. Okay. Oh, big fight. Follow my them. I will take you down. I'll take you down. All right, well, let's start with Boring Dude. Um, so again, we want to kind of be in melee range. I think we can go to... Oh, no, we can't go to... The, we can't be literally next to an enemy. And that's fine. What we got here? Cutthroat. So there's... Yeah, so th these front ones have a bit more health. But we should be able to take them down. Uh, and that's Argenta. I kind of want to see what she's got going on. So let's uh, let's pop her up here as well. We can support with our blood. 
And Indira. I don't think there's a lot of cover here, but maybe behind this thing. Even though it doesn't immediately appear that there is. Alright, let's start the battle. Deer is actually first. So I think we'll do that lightning shock again. Uh, maybe it was more of a parthing thing before, because she can hit this guy now. Well, oh, he's within that sort of inner red was band. You? Ah, I was hoping it might spread to those two, but that's okay. Um... I'm going to, again, give Boring Dude a bit of a boost. That'll do. Yeah, we parried it. Now it's Abelard. Thinking about oh no that's that's cover. A tactically sound approach. So I'm thinking about charging. It will be done. Reduced to dust. And then what has he got? Oh, let's put this on that guy. Now it's Argenta's turn. She is a, she's actually a ranged character. Oh, does she have an alternative weapon set? She does, but it's it's single pistols. Okay, so single shot. She's got auto shot. Um, shot on the run. Marksman gains plus two movement points. The next attack costs one action point less, and they suffer a minus ten. I think it's ballistic skill penalty, so it's not as accurate. Grants momentum. I'm not quite sure what momentum is. I might have to look into the rules a bit. Uh, Marks immediately dashes in a selected direction, spending all movement points. Does not provoke attacks of opportunity. Well, she, I think she can just get here anyway. Let's bring her here. Um, and we'll just... Uh, how many action points do these? This is only one action point. 75%, not too bad. Wow, okay, we've got some more coming in. It's an Argentus turn. Uh, why has she lost that? I refuse. Oh, okay. She's still at AP. Um, I don't know if she swapped guns. No. Okay, well, I think we can swap back. Uh, I thought she'd be able to get one more, sh another shot off, but apparently not. Wow, well, she pushes up. I mean, I guess we'll end turn. I'm so oh, she can shoot again. So what's going on there? Maybe because I chose shot on the run. Sixty-five. Less less chance to hit here. Missed. Okay. Another dodge. Another miss. Hey, boring dude. I mean, obviously I want to attack this guy. I don't want to, like, use up all my movement points, though. I guess... I was thinking I could come there and then maybe dash? I don't know. I don't think I can, though. So I don't quite get this. Sort of losing all the movement points after you attack. But oh well. Suits my purposes. He dodged. Absolutely not. I don't. I 
top two. Um, I would, yeah, this attack stuff is... You can only do one attack per turn. I mean, I'm sure that's not the case. Hmm. Alright, just gonna endure then. Guess that's it. Because in the last battle we attacked twice with um, Abelard, I was sure. <laughs> okay, friendly fire is a thing we've discovered. Ah, oh, we can remove some... That is not my destiny. Oh. Why is that unavailable? Not the scryer's job. Okay, so it kind of boosts her damage and she can also uh, she can then use those stacks to go, okay, okay, so it's a bit of a more of a slow burn ability then perhaps. I might leave this dude because he's a bit more easy to get to. Uh, we can come here. Pretty nice. At your back and call. I'm not interested. Spends the ability to use the attack abilities on current turn. That's not the Senator's job. I don't know. I don't I don't really get it. I thought we'd attack twice in a previous encounter, but maybe I'm wrong. Well, let's get Argenta to target this guy then. 75, that seems okay. Guided by faith. I'll do it. Eradicate it. We need to kill this guy this time. 91%. What if we moved? That, is that like an attack of opportunity range? It might be. Uh, Suits my purposes. You don't stand a chance. There he goes. We could charge up somewhere. Could charge over here. Just this dude left now, though, isn't it? Is that because he moved out of range? Okay, so now it's just a deer. There is movement in the Empyrean. So why have we got this one available now? Heroic act. What does that mean? Has she? saved up some energy or something. Oh, here we go. Momentum. Let's read what momentum is, because this has been mentioned a little bit. A special combat resource required for using the unique abilities called Heroic Act and Desperate Measure. 
The abilities can only be used once per round for the entire party and once per battle for each character. Okay. Right. A special combat resource. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so you want to charge this you want to charge this up then. I don't know if it's per battle or whether it's like it stays there. Between battles, what's this? Veil thickness. Oh, we haven't touched that yet. Um, so this, what does this do? I mean, it's pretty good, but he's only got four hit points, so let's not bother. Let's just put our basic one on. We'll do. Just in case it, it persists between battles. Okay, just wondering if a cutscene's going to happen, but it doesn't appear to. So let's just uh, let's grab some stuff. Got the swords. Uh, I guess I guess we'll accept everything. And it's done. It's got quite a big radius, but it doesn't do every dead enemy, does it? So take that. Oh, this is to open a door. We might want to do that. Not sure. I'll take it. Uh, we got some things to loot. That's probably where we want to go. this void sweat ale and stuff dust goes into cargo fine what about in here attention to detail is the key to success uh, more supply type stuff I guess we'll take it got a few different doors here let's see what's this one what does this do He's got the logic, Abelard. That was barely a challenge. Okay, a little chamber in here. What have we got here? We've got some stuff to loot. Always nice. We have Melter Charge. Operator's gloves. The wearer of these gains a plus three bonus to tech use charges. Okay. I'm not going to equip any of the companions with stuff now because I don't know who's going to be just a companion in this section and who's going to be sort of persist more. Uh, let's try tech use. Oh, did it. Ah, restore the power supply, sure. Experience. Nothing matters more. That's good. Got another door here. Uh, I guess we'll do logic. Nothing's impossible for this officer. Well, that's proven quite useful. Can have a couple of boxes. Got medikits, melter charges. Okay, this one's locked. We we'll try tech use. Who that was a good idea? We have a mantle of heroism. Requires a benevolencia adherent. Each heroic act used in the battle increases wearer's dodge by ten percent. Not bad. And a multi-key universal lock picking tool. Okay. I'll lay claim to the stars. Have a quick look on our inventory at the stuff we we gather. That's that's not it. Um, can we equip? Okay, so I can't equip this mantle. Can any of our people equip it? Does it say can or can't? Can be equipped. As Abelard requires Benevolencia adherent. What does that mean? Benevolence here. Belief in the value of human life and freedom. Faith in the power of goodwill. Capable of overcoming the horrors and dangers of the universe without artificial prohibitions. The desire to seek a common language and a compromise instead of uncompromising destruction. Huh. I'm taking it. I guess... Oh, hang on. Oh, is this like... Um, kind of like a morality system. So we've got Hereticus. Devotion to the corruption and taint of the warp in the form of submission to the basest and darkest impulses of the soul, or as a consistent worship of the ancient gods of the Immaterium. So we've got uh, basically Renegade and um, Paragon. <laughs> I 
We haven't got any points for either at the moment. So what about... Oh. I've uh, got some Hereticus points in Adira. And uh, Argenta's actually a bit of a mystery to us at the moment. Okay, so basically it's saying that that cloak is for kind of good good character, so presumably neither of these can equip it. Only Abelard. It's rather fetching. But I don't know if Abelard's going to be a permanent uh, addition to the group, so I'm actually going to take that off for now. Let's go back to us. Uh, so, Operator's Gloves. Each of the gloves gains a plus three bonus to tech use checks. Uh, what's my tech... Tech use is at 25%. So if I... 28. There we go. Who actually has the highest? So we've got 30 there. 30, 30. So I'm still the lowest. It's because my intelligence is low. I think when I come to play this properly, I'll probably... I tend to go for more rogue-type archetypes, which generally means, you know, quite good at intelligence and skills and stuff. Um, which isn't the case here, obviously. I wonder what the downside is to having two weapons equipped. Does it reduce my accuracy, maybe? Am I... Okay, let's... Have I got, like, a hit chance and stuff? Uh, so if I put that back... Because it's not like he attacks with it. Same with that. Because in D&D &D you'd expect them to have like a sort of two-handed weapon stat or something like that. I don't see anything like this here, so I'm, I'm not sure if there's any benefit or negative of using a, a weapon in each hand. If, you, if you've played the, the game Alpha or Beta and, and have any more insight on that, you know, do let me know in the comments because I'd be interested to know kind of what the, um, what the gameplay stuff going on there is. But anyway, that's the way we're going to go, but we... Ooh, hello. Someone got some more goods up there. Looks like a dead body. But we're going to leave it there for now. So I'll just say thanks very much for watching this second episode of our mini-series on the, uh, the beta uh, available for Rogue Trader. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Um, I'm enjoying playing this. As I said at the start of the first episode, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of the Alcat RPGs. I think they're... They feel in many ways like the sort of inheritor to like the classic Bioware... Uh, RPGs, you know, like um, Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 and, 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 and etc. Um, which are some of my favourite games, so it makes sense that I enjoy these too. Um, but, you know, let me know what you think as well in the comments. As If you enjoyed it, as I hope you did, hit the thumbs up button on the video, but also let me know kind of your thoughts on, on the game so far. Uh, if you're familiar with 40k lore, that, you know, how does this measure up against that? And um, what would you be looking forward to seeing in game? Just let me know. And if you're watching this and haven't already subscribed to the channel, it'd be great if you could do so. It'd be great to have you around on Boring Dad Gaming. So thanks very much one last time, and I hope to see you next time for the continuation of Rogue Trader beta gameplay. Thanks very much, and bye for now.